everybody, the Emmy nominations were announced today, and so we're gonna play a live version of who should win. Here we go, who should win and who will win. Uh, I'm gonna try and do polls along with it, but unfortunately, I only get four sections in a poll. Uh, however, there are uh, like sometimes seven or eight nominees. I think the Emmys cheats a little bit, uh, but uh, I mean, at least they get a lot of good ones in there. Now, before we get started as to the actual uh, nominations, okay? Yeah, well, polls could really slow us down. Let's see. I think maybe instead you guys should uh, just say in the comments who you like, uh, and that way people who aren't watching live will have a better idea of uh, what everybody thinks, and every, every contender will have a, a chance. Uh, all right, so we just started, Mr. Andrews. So HBO and Max, because now uh, shows air on Max, so Max gets to be part of this conversation, even though not a single Max original is a nominee, really. Uh, they won with 127 nominations. And then, oh, thanks for gifting a membership, Tom. And then Netflix was the runner-up uh, with 103. And it's usually between these two. Uh, then the top three nominated shows are all HBO. Succession with 27 nominations, The Last of Us with 24, and The White Lotus with 23. Thanks for gifting a membership, 80s model. Uh, do, two Disney Plus Star Wars shows were nominated, uh, Andor and Obi-Wan Kenobi, but no actors were nominated from any of the shows, including Andy Serkis, which I think was a little surprising. Thanks for gifting some memberships, Tanya. That's quite generous of you. Uh, that's right, Mika, Love and Death is a Max original. That's a fair point, but it does not, certainly not a strong, doesn't have a lot of nominations. But also House of the Dragon didn't get any acting nominations. And I saw, saw, I saw some of you talking about before we started that it's very unfortunate that Patty Considine, Considine wasn't recognized for his work. But I think the real issue is there's so, not so much that Patty Considine's work isn't good, but more so that uh, there's just such strong acting, particularly out of Succession, The Last of Us, and White Lotus. Those are actor-driven shows, more so than House of the Dragon. So that's right, Kay Walton, it's Friendly Fire from HBO. They have too much. They, and they can't, they, they're fill, there are some categories where it's all just like Succession and White Lotus. I think it's like Best Supporting Actor Drama or something, and it's nuts. Some other snubs before we get into the actual nominees, our Harrison Ford, uh, he's having a rough time. At least he's getting paid. Uh, he got uh, snubbed not only for shrinking, which I think, you know, I think, you know, there might have been room for him there. We'll see in the respective categories. Uh, but also for his Yellowstone show. Helen Mirren was snubbed for that as well. Yo Yellowstone, in fact, the entire franchise was snubbed by the Emmys, despite the fact that it's so popular. Uh, just so you know how Emmy voting works, uh, you don't have to watch all the shows. You just have to watch like an episode or part of an episode. It's on the honor system. They don't even check to see if you watch all the shows. So that's why sometimes I think the, I think it's getting better and TV's so hot right now, it's becoming as fun as the Oscars. But it's just like a very different type of situation. You don't have to watch the movies for Oscar voting either, quite frankly. Uh, so that's how I think, by the way, Sam is, I was too shocked that Obi-Wan got nominated but I think that some Academy voters love Ewan McGregor. Who doesn't? And I think they watch like the one episode and we're like, ah, oh, cool, Ewan McGregor's back, good for him. Uh, we like him, we'll vote for it. Not for actor, but for show. Elizabeth Olsen was, uh, it was very sad, Elizabeth Olsen was snubbed. Uh, and I think what makes it hurt particularly was that Jesse Plemons was nominated for the show. It's not like they just ignored the show, they specifically ignored Elizabeth Olsen. So that pretty, that's pretty sucky. Yeah, Platinum Diva, I'm excited to go over those, um, those nominees. Uh, Selena Gomez once again snubbed, yet again. However, this time she was joined on the snub bench by Steve Martin, also snubbed. I gotta tell you, I'm watching the new uh, Only Murders, and it's not very good, I feel bad. All right, maybe it'll pick up. I'm about halfway through. Uh, and then Lord of the Rings, totally snubbed, totally snubbed, they spent all that money on it, no nominations at all, totally snubbed. Uh, all right, so those are like, that's just the overall. Now we're gonna go through, and as I said, to make this not be too slow, and because I, can't, I don't have enough sections anyway, 
please write down who you think should win in the comments and then people watching this now or, or not live will be able to, uh, to see what, who everybody likes. Okay? Uh, all right. Meryl Streep is quite good. As you know, Meryl Streep cannot do a bad job. She has a song which is so beautiful. I loved that. All right, so again, we're playing should win, will win, and be sure to specify that in your comments. We're not doing the craft awards. We'll be here forever. There are too many Emmy categories. So what we're going over are the a series, an actor, and they have a ridiculous number of nominees. So for each category, drama, comedy, and limited series, we've got best actor, best actress, supporting actor, supporting actress, and then also a uh, guest actor and actress. So you're like, what? What's this guest stuff, man? Are you kidding me with this? Oh, by the way, you know who else got snubbed? Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis got snubbed uh, for the bear. We all thought she was a shoe in but she snubbed. Oh, ooh, so bad. All right. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we go. All right, we're starting off with drama series. Oh, that, no, it's, oh, I guess that would be next. Oh, that's, this is for season two of the bear. Oh, that's a long way away. I hope she can. Oh, you're right. So it's just the bear season one. That makes more sense. Thank you for clarifying. All right. All right. I'm glad because she was so good. All right. So here we go. This is, it's very, I think that the Emmy window is a little bit confusing and ridiculous and they should fix that. All right. So here is drama series. You can see Andor, Better Call Saul, The Crown, still in it, baby. House of the Dragon, The Last of Us, Succession, The White Lotus, and Yellow Jackets. That's clearly for Yellow Jackets season one, as I thought Yellow Jackets season two was one of the worst things I ever watched. Uh, but yeah, Showtime's on there. They're like, hey man, we're on here, whatever. But look at, the, look at the HBO supremacy. All right, who do I think will win? Okay, hold on. Oh, well, who do I think should win? Should win? Mm, okay, this is tough. Andor, ain't no way Andor's going to win. Uh, and I don't think, I think Better Call Saul, everybody's like, ooh, Better Call Saul, you know, it should finally win. Uh, this co the competition is against it is too much. So I agree with everyone that it should be The Last of Us or Succession, quite frankly. Um, the White Lotus is very good, but it won a lot yesterday, last year. The, the first season of White Lotus won like a ton last year. And this is the final season of Succession. And everybody knows White Lotus is coming back. So I got to tell you, because it's the end of Succession and it was so incredible, I think, well, that's who should win. I think for who will win, I think it's probably Succession. I think Succession probably will win. Just because it was so extraordinary and I think it really appeals to Emmy voters. It's very Hollywood, it's very businessy, it was very political. People are going to eat that up with a spoon, you know? So I think it's going to be Succession. I believe Succession has won before, but I think it's going to win again. I mean, you could have a surprise with The Last of Us, but The Last of Us is coming back. I think the very fact that it was nominated is tremendous for the show. It doesn't need to win. Uh, I think just being nominated is, is incredible. And it might win. I think it will win in some other categories. So I think it's going to be Succession for the win. All right, so let's reset for the next, next one. We're going through the categories. Uh, we're going to do all drama and then go into comedy. All right, so lead actor in a drama series, Bob Odenkirk for Better Call Saul. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Brian Cox for Succession. He sure went to town criticizing that show after he got killed off. Uh, I'm sorry if you haven't watched Succession. Hey, Iceman3000, thanks for gifting those memberships. The Jeff Bridges got nominated for The Old Man. That's awesome. Uh, so that, that show didn't get nominated. Jeremy Strong for Succession. Kieran Culkin for Succession. I saw people saying it was like a, a huge deal that they got three lead actor nominations at the same time. That just shows you how strong Succession is. And then, of course, Pedro Pascal for The Last of Us. I got to tell you, who do I think should win? I kind of want to give it to Pedro Pascal. I agree with you. I like Kieran Culkin a lot. But Pedro Pascal really did a lot for The Last of Us. Give Succession best show, best drama, give it to Pedro Pascal, especially since some of you pointed out that Jeremy Strong has won in the past. I think as to who will win, I think it might be Pedro. It might be Pedro Pascal. I think there's a chance, especially since he's nominated even for his Saturday Night Live performance. That's how much 
the, uh, the Television Academy is on the Pedro Pascal train. So that's very promising. But I do feel there's some chance that maybe Jeremy Strong could take it because he was so good this season and he had some really strong episodes. When he was promoting Living Plus, that was such a phenomenal episode. And the finale, of course. So I do think Jeremy Strong is a very good competition. So I think it'll be between these two, Pedro Pascal or Jeremy Strong. I'm having fun doing this live with you. This is a lot of fun. So I think it's between those two, okay? Poor, maybe Bob Odenkirk. Maybe, maybe, but I, I don't think so. I just don't think his performance is as exciting as the other ones. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, we're resetting. All right, best actress in a drama series. As you can see, this clearly will be aired on Fox. <laughs> good brand, good advertising. And it's the 75th Emmy Awards. Whoo, been around for a long time. All right, so Bella Ramsey for The Last of Us. That's exciting. Elizabeth Moss for The Handmaid's Tale. Carrie Russell for The Diplomat. I'm thrilled. I love Carrie Russell on that show. Melanie Linsky for Yellow Jackets. Sarah Snook for Succession. Oh, and Sharon Horgan for Bad Sisters. Bad Sisters is on Apple TV, by the way. This is its only nomination, but I have to tell you, it's a really good show. You should watch that show. I kind of guessed the ending, but I didn't know if they'd be brave enough to do it, and they did, and it's really a phenomenal show. So who, who should win? Well, I gotta tell you, Bella Ramsey's also pretty fantastic. Uh, Elizabeth Moss has really already had her time. I think Sarah Snook, big, big, big fan, and I think she had a great season. And then, uh, Carrie Russell, it's just wonderful that she's nominated. And same for Melanie Alinsky. I don't think either, I don't, I, okay. For who, who I think should win, I think it's between Bella Ramsey, Sarah Snook, and Sharon Horgan, actually. Sharon Horgan did a very good job with this show and it was quite, quite good. But I'm gonna rest my should on Sarah Snook. And then I'm gonna say that she probably also will win, to be honest with you. I could see maybe Melanie Alinsky taking it, to be honest with you. So I'm going to kind of put it in the middle. But I think as to who will win, I think it'll be between these two. I know a lot of you are cheering for Bella Ramsey. I agree. I think she's a great choice. But I think it's early on in her career. And I think Melanie Linsky got a lot of hate. There might be some sympathy for that. You know, a lot of hate online. So I could see her potentially taking it for that reason. Also, Melanie Linsky is a working, a working actress. She's been around for a very long time. And we all know that actors in the, in the industry like to reward people who finally get a chance to, to shine. Uh, for what, Billow? Melanie Linsky for, uh, for Yellow Jackets, season one. Uh, she is nominated in another category uh, for The Last of Us, actually. Uh, but I don't think she's going to win there. So let's see. All right. She got a lot of hate for The Last of Us, unfortunately. I think people were a little bit too cruel. I didn't love her performance either, but I think people uh, went below the belt. Uh, all right, next. Uh, all right, so, or at least there's so many categories. Supporting actor in a drama series. As you can see, it's all succession in The White Lotus. And they have eight nominees. Eight nominees. Whose birthday is it? Happy birthday, Kevin. Uh, all right, so that's incredible. Eight nominees divided between two shows. That's nuts. Alan Rock got nominated. Alexander Skarsgård got nominated for Succession. Matthew McFadden for Succession. Nicholas Braun. Cousin Greg got nominated. That's incredible. And then, why, I think it's too many nominations as well, SMR Goose. It's ridiculous. They should have five nominations. And, you know, I'm sorry. You just have to pick five. And then The White Lotus has F. Murray Abraham, Michael Imperioli, Theo James, and Will Sharp. That's nuts. All right, so I got to tell you, as for who should win, I kind of think it should be Matthew McFadden again. He won last year, but he had another great season, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I, would, I would think he should win again. I agree with Patrick. I do think Alexander Skarsgård did a great job as well, but Matthew McFadden was incredible. And his, the, the arc that his character had this season, standing up for himself, was so strong. Uh, and as for Will win, I gotta tell you, I think he's gonna win again. I do. I think maybe you might see it go to Nicholas, Cousin Greg, Nicholas Braun. And I think maybe Alexander Skarsgård. I don't think any of these White Lotus people are winning, by the way. Uh, I mean, maybe we'll be surprised, but I really do think it's gonna be Matthew McFadden. He was a tour de force this season yet again. 
Uh, Zendaya won twice in a row for the same performance, uh, you know, for the same character and same show. I think Matthew McFadden could do the same. All right, next, supporting actress in a drama series. Aubrey Plaza for The White Lotus. Megan Fahey for The White Lotus. A lot of Megan Fahey fans after her big monologue. Elizabeth Debicki for The Crown. Rhea Seahorn for Better Call Saul. Again, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. J. Cameron Smith for Succession. Sabrina Impassiatore for The White Lotus. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge for The White Lotus. And Simona Tabasco also for The White Lotus. All right, for, as for who should win, I agree with you that I kind of like Aubrey Plaza for this. Jennifer Coolidge already won a lot. And she was, again, incredible. But I got, I mean, in her, her scene, her big finale this season was incredible. But I think Aubrey Plaza, you know, it's time, I think that show is not just Jennifer Coolidge, to be honest with you, even though she's, of course, integral to its success. And I would like to see Aubrey Plaza kind of get it. I also could see maybe Elizabeth Debicki getting it for The Crown. I thought she was incredible there. And I think there's a very good chance. So that's who I think should win, to be honest with you. And I think there's a very good chance that it'd probably be either one of them. But maybe Jennifer Coolidge yet again, because that ending was so phenomenal. But yeah, I, I kind of see it between these two. I think, again, this is, this is below, this is a very tough category. So yeah, I, I think it's probably between these two. Uh, Megan Fahey, again, the nomination is the win. And hopefully she'll start being considered for other roles in movies as well as television. All right, so now we're going on to this crazy category of guest actor. That means you don't have enough, uh, enough screen time to be a supporting, but enough to make an impression. And I think in some cases it makes sense, like The Last of Us, which is sometimes a bit of an anthology type show. But I mean, Arian Moyed for Succession, I mean, that's really a supporting role. He's very good. I like him a lot on that show, but I think that's crazy. James Cromwell, also for Succession. He did a phenomenal job with the funeral speech that he gave. But I agree with all of you. It's going to go to somebody from The Last of Us. So basically, they've highlighted episode three and episode five, which mirrored each other. And they were incredible, incredible scenes, uh, uh, episodes. Uh, now, uh, I think... It's, I think as far as who should win, it should be anyone who was in The Last of Us. But honestly, again, uh, Kayvon Montreal Woodard and Lamar Johnson, it's wonderful, wonderful that they're nominated, but it really is going on here with episode three. Episode three was uh, an incredible landmark episode for television uh, history. It was uh, probably the best mainstream uh, representation that we've seen for the LGBT community yet and something that was able to cross over to be a huge mainstream hit and yet still, I think, be authentic and respectful. And so I think that it's probably going to be between the two of them. I know a lot of you are saying Nick Offerman will win, but I'll be honest with you, he's not actually LGBT. So I think I could see some people maybe going with Murray Bartlett for that reason, even though he already won last year, not as a guest, but he won for White Lotus. Um, and I thought he did beautiful work. But I really liked Nick Offerman's work as well. So I'd be happy with either one of them, although I think it might go a little bit more in the direction of Murray Bartlett. Uh, but I think both of them. I wish they could share it, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't be surprised if Murray, if either one of them goes up there, they don't invite the other one up there to join them. Because it really was for both of them, quite honestly. I think it was really, uh, you know, I agree, it's a tie. I think they were both incredible uh, on, on the show. Uh, so absolutely adored it. So, all right, so let's reset one more, and then we're going to move on to the comedy category. Hold on. Guest actress in a drama series. Anna Torv from The Last of Us. Uh, Hiam Abbas, who, plays, who played Logan's uh, wife, estranged wife in succession. Cherry Jones, who played the head of the company in succession they were trying to purchase. Melanie Linsky for her role in The Last of Us. Harriet Walter for Succession, who played, uh, you know, the parent, the mother of the children, uh, you know, Brian Cox's Logan Roy's first wife. And then, yes, Storm Reed for The Last of Us. And I got to tell you, I think that's not only who should win, but I think it's who will win. I think that that's an incredible performance. I think everybody else here is very nice. Uh, Harriet Walker is actually nominated in the comedy category as well for also playing someone's mom. But I think Storm Reid did a really beautiful job. I think all the other actresses here are recognized for their work. Anna Torv, 
It's also kind of a rising star, but I thought that what Storm Reed did was really beautiful. And I think that, you know, it's another chance to anoint an ingenue, which Hollywood loves to do. So I would like to see Storm Reed, and I think she probably is a shoe in, in to get it. She was just phenomenal in that uh, episode. Really, and I think we haven't really seen her get to do that level of acting to date. Uh, all right, so that's the drama category. All right, hold on. Let's move on to comedy. Here we go. All right, comedy series. So many categories, so many nominees. It's supposed to be five. All right, Abbott Elementary, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Barry, Only Murders in the Building, The Bear, Ted Lasso, Jury Duty, and Wednesday. Oh, my goodness, this is hilarious. Uh, jury Duty really surprised a lot of people. If you aren't familiar with what Jury Duty is, it's a show on Amazon Freevee, which is their free ad-supported streaming service. You know, which we've seen a lot of these new free services. Uh, and Jury Duty is a, actually a pretty funny show where it's all actors, including James Marsden playing himself, creating a fake Jury Duty situation, and then there's a real guy who is the focus who is the only one who thinks it's real. And they're sequestered, and it's like, it's a really cute show, and I think that James Marston was really willing to poke a lot of fun at himself, which was quite funny. So as for who should win, okay, hold on. All right, so for who should win, this is tough. I think a lot of people love Abbott Elementary, and that's fantastic. I have a lot of respect for that show. I can definitely see it taking it again. I didn't like the final season of Barry. Uh, is this for the final season of Barry or is this for Barry season three or whatever? Uh, Mrs. Maisel, again, is this for the most recent season of Mrs. Maisel or was it for the one before it? Um, I think I think I would kind of like to see Wednesday win or the bear. I actually, I'm gonna go with the bear. I really loved the bear. I thought, I think the bear is a phenomenal show. Uh, this is for season one, which I thought was great. I kind of would like the bear to win it. As for who will win it, I could see it being Abbott Elementary, the bear, but I also think it could be jury duty for the fact that it was even nominated. That could be a surprise win. It's also all because James Marsden's nominated. So that's pretty strong. So I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be Abbott Elementary again, the bear, or jury duty. That's my guess as to who's actually going to win. Uh, all right, let's go on to the acting categories. All right, hold on. The next one is lead actor in a comedy series, Bill Hader for Barry, Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso, Jason Siegel for Shrinking, oh, Bernard Harrison Ford, Jeremy Allen White for The Bear, and then only Martin Short for Only Murders in the Building. Why couldn't they have eight nominees here? Why'd they have to do to Steve Martin like that, man? All right, for, as for who should win, it's, bear, it's Jer Jeremy Allen White for the bear. Uh, I, I, I really like Martin Short on Only Murders, by the way. Uh, so I wouldn't be upset if he won. So I'm going to put it right here. I think it's going to be between the two of them. And I think, by the way, I think that's who will win between these two, with a slight edge towards Jeremy Allen White. I think it's going to go between these two. I hated the final season of Barry so much that I'm done with Barry. That's how much I hated it. I thought it was brilliant what they were doing, and then I think it fell apart to such a degree that I'm like, um, it's over, and maybe you're not as talented as I thought you were. I'm not saying you can't win me back. I'm not saying Bill Hader can't win me back, but I'm not happy at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I don't think Jason Sudeikis will win. I think it's gonna be Jeremy Allen White. And if you haven't seen The Bear, get on it. It's an amazing show, and it's a great binge. But I think Martin Short is good. I like Martin Short actually quite a bit in the current season that I'm watching of Only Murders. He's very, very good. I'm sorry, Vast. That's how I feel. And so does Vontron. Von Vontron agrees. All right. About Barry. All right. Lead actress in a comedy series. Christina Applegate, Dead to Me. Jenna Ortega, Wednesday. That's phenomenal for her. Natasha Leone for Poker Face. Quinta Brunson for Abbott Elementary. And then Rachel Brosnahan, our new Lois Lane, for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Now, Christina Applegate, of course, is sick. Uh, and this, she feels, is maybe her last role. So I could see her maybe winning for that reason. And she's very good on Dead to Me. So I could see it being Christina Applegate or Quinta Brunson, quite frankly. 
Uh, I like Quentin Brunson a lot. I love Natasha Leone on this show, but I don't think she's going to win. Uh, I think it might be Quentin Brunson again, to be honest with you, particularly because Abbott's going to walk away with something, and I think this is probably its strongest category. Uh, but then, as, so I think that she probably will be will win as well. So we'll see. But I think it could also maybe be Christina Applegate because she was so good, uh, and she, also because she's sick. Uh, show, uh, uh, Shogun, I would agree with that. Uh, I think, you know, I, I respect, I guess, the, 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 the bold stroke, but boy, did it not pan out for Barry, in my opinion. All right, so next category, supporting actor in a comedy series. Yeah, look at this. I don't know why they limit it in the mains, but in, and for the supporting, they just are like, everybody, you get a nomination, you get a nomination. And we're like, this is ridiculous. I mean, it really splits the vote. It's nuts. All right, supporting actor in a comedy series. Anthony Corrigan for Barry. He is quite good on that show. Brett Goldstein for Ted Lasso. Eben Moss Bachrock for The Bear. Oh, I'm so happy for him, and his season two is even better. Uh, Henry Winkler for Barry. James Marsden for Jury Duty. Phil Dunster for Ted Lasso. And Tyler James Williams for Abbott Elementary. Mm, all right, for who should win? I'm going to go with Yvonne. If you haven't, if you've seen the bear, you know that should be true. And I don't think, I think the bear gets to, has to, needs more respect. And I think this is a fabulous role and I think it should be him. However, as for who will win, I think it's either going to be, I, I don't know if I'm lucky enough for it to be Yvonne, but I think it might be James Marsden because he's even nominated, which is nuts, which means actors really liked this. And then also, I think it could be Anthony Corrigan for Barry because that is such an incredible performance and he's so good at it. So I think maybe for who will win, it might be Anthony, Ebon, or James. That's what I see winning in this category. But wouldn't it be great if it was Ebon? That would make me so happy because I, I, don't, I don't think he's really getting enough respect. He's got like no followers on social media. Nobody knows who this guy is, and I want that to change. All right. I was like, how do you have so few followers? It's nuts. You're on a major show. He's like, tell me about it. All right. Uh, next up, I'm glad you follow him, Lisa. I actually don't follow him. <laughs> I should follow him. All right. All right. Emmy's uh, supporting actress in a comedy series. Alex Borstein, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. A.O. Edibiri for The Bear. Hannah Waddingham for Ted Lasso. Janelle James for Abbott Elementary. Jessica Williams for Shrinking. Uh, this Harrison Ford snub is getting so much worse. Juno Temple for Ted Lasso. And Cheryl Lee Ralph for Abbott Elementary. I agree with everybody here. I think it's a hands down. I think that who should win is Ao, and I think she will win, almost for sure. She's extremely good in this category, uh, this show. Uh, we've had enough Ted Lasso love at this point. Mrs. Maisel has enough. I mean, I think that Alex Borstein is incredible on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and so is Hanna, Hannah Waddingham. You know, I'm a big fan of both of them. But, you know, they've already won. Uh, and, uh, you know, with all due respect to everybody else in this category, it's A.O. Edebury's time to shine. I think the bear could really maybe do some strong sweeping, which it would be great. I would, anything to make more people watch that show, because it's absolutely incredible. So let's see. So I think that that's what I would do for uh, supporting. All right, now we got to do guest. Guest actor in a comedy series. All right, John Bernthal for The Bear. Luke Kirby for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He was barely in this season. Uh, maybe it's season four. Uh, Nathan Lane for Only Murders in the Building. Oliver Platt for The Bear. He's great on The Bear. Pedro Pascal for Saturday Night Live. And Sam Richardson on Ted Lasso. He's very good on that. Uh, all right, so as for who should win, for me it's between Oliver Platt for The Bear or Pedro Pascal for Saturday Night Live. I'm going to put it right there because I think it's so good, all right? Now, as for who will win, I think it might be Pedro Pascal. It would be amazing if he walked home with two Emmys. I think a lot of it will, you know, is this going to be like his consolation Emmy because he doesn't win Best Actor Drama? That's possible. So I feel it's pretty clear that the, between the, the two best actors in this category, in my opinion, hands down, are Oliver Platt and Pedro Pascal. But I think Pedro Pascal might win it. And I think he might win it because I agree with SMR Goose. It's unlikely he's going to take home both categories. 
So I feel like it's maybe it might be this. I can choose the bear in every category, Dogomania, and so can the voters. But he was really funny on Saturday Night Live, and it's been a long time since almost every sketch on the show delivered. Uh, and he was the host, and he did a great job in all of them. All right, guest actress in a comedy series. Becky Ann Baker for Ted Lasso. Uh, she, um, she played uh, the mom, right? Yes, she played the mom uh, for Ted Lasso. Harriet Walter played Hannah Waddingham's mom. Quinta Brunson on Saturday Night Live, also nominated for SNL. Sarah Niles, this is a psychiatrist on Ted Lasso. Taraji P. Henson for Abbott Elementary. And Judith Light for Poker Face. I like Judith Light too, but I didn't quite care for, the, for Poker Face, to be honest with you. So this must be the latest season of Ted Lasso. All right, for as for who should win, I'm going to go with Becky Ann Baker for Ted Lasso as Ted's mom. That was a really great episode. And I thought that she did uh, a great job. Uh, I haven't seen Taraji P. Henson on Abbott Elementary, but I can see a lot of you saying that she should win. So maybe, I think maybe Taraji P. Henson will win. Or Quinta Brunson, if she doesn't win her other category. But uh, Taraji P. Henson, so a lot of you really loved her on this show. Maybe that might be the Abbott Elementary love, you know, that the show gets this year. Uh, all right, so next... All right, next category. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Limited or anthology series. We've got beef. Uh, now, remember, White Lotus used to compete in this category and got pulled out and stuck over in drama category, which didn't hurt it at all. In fact, it just hurt other shows. So this is limited series where you're not supposed to come back for more. Beef is coming back, supposedly, so I don't understand why uh, <laughs> it's in this category. So Beef, Dahmer, Daisy Jones in the Sixth, what? Fleischman is in trouble, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. That last one's a real head scratcher. I can't believe it's even in the category. As for who should win, I feel Dahmer was too tough for me to watch. It was just too graphic and gruesome, although I, I'm, I think it shined a spotlight on some very important aspects to the Dahmer case. Uh, so I think it's between Beef and Dahmer. I don't agree that Beef is DOA, Mika. I don't agree with you. I think that people have decided that that guy can't work again, but I don't think they're going to penalize the show for it. You can see how many nominations it got. People were just voting. It's the same group. So I don't think Beef is going to be DOA. I think Beef is too good to not be. I, I think Nah, I, I'm Platinum Diva, I respect that you think Dahmer was better, and I think there's a good chance that I think it's going to be between the two of them, but I, I think it's going to be um, beef. Uh, but I do think even for Wilwin, it's between these two. I think the other ones, it's just an honor to be nominated. All right, so let's take a look at the actor categories. All right, hold on. All right, lead actor in a limited or anthology series or a movie. Everything's up for grabs here. This is the, 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 the catch-all bin. Daniel Radcliffe for Weird Al, the Weird Al Yankovic story. Michael Shannon for George and Tammy. Evan Peters for Dahmer. Steven Yoon for Beef. So good on that show. Uh, Kumail Nanjani for Welcome to Chippendales. That show started out great, but then it became very by the numbers, and I didn't care for it. And then Taron Edgerton for Blackbird. He was great on that. All right, so as for who should win, I'm going to put it right here. This is my triangle of goodness. Sorry, Kumail Nanjani, you're not in it. Evan Peters, Stephen Yoon, and Taryn Edgerton. That's who I would put it in. Those three. That's who I think should win. But as for who will win? Yeah, I couldn't finish Chippendales either, Derek. I actually don't think it will be Stephen Yoon. I think it's going to be Evan Peters for Dahmer. I think he's going to win. Uh, I'd be delighted if it was any one of those three. I, I wish Taryn Edgerton had a better chance. I'm just so happy he's nominated. But I think it's going to be Evan Peters. But the, my triangle of goodness is Evan Peters, Stephen Yoon, and Taryn Edgerton. All right, next up, Best Actress in a Limited or, uh, or Anthology Series or a Movie. Uh, no Elizabeth Olsen. All right, Ali Wong for, uh, for Beef. Dominique Fishback for Swarm. That's fantastic for her. Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy. Katherine Hahn for Tiny Beautiful Things. 
Lizzie Kaplan for Fleischman is in Trouble, who was also in Fatal Attraction, by the way. And then Riley Keough for Daisy Jones and the Six. All right, I'm going to say, as for who should win, Ali Wong. She was incredible in Beef, and I thought her character was amazing, and I think that she represented something that, you know, was really good. I thought she was incredible. As for who will win, I agree with all of you that it's between these two, Ali Wong or Dominique Fishback. I think it's between them. I think they're going to dominate the category. But I think it's going to be Ali Wong, and she would be my pick. She, it's just, to me, I look at this and I'm like, there's no question it should be Ali Wong, quite frankly. Uh, all right. Then next, supporting. Hold on. We're almost wrapped, and then you can ask me questions. Supporting actor in a limited or anthology series or a movie. Jesse Plummins, Love and Death. What? He got nominated. Paul Walter Hauser for Blackbird. Oh, amazing. Ray Liotta for Blackbird. I thought Ray Liotta was amazing in Blackbird. Uh, Joseph Lee for Beef. I think he's the uh, husband, Ali Wong's husband. Murray Bartlett for Welcome to Chippendales. But again, Welcome to Chippendales was so bad, I, I can't, can't give it to anybody for that. Richard Jenkins for Dahmer. And then Young Mazzino for Beef. Uh, he played uh, uh, Stephen Yoon's brother. I have to say, for who I would go with, I like Jesse Plemons, but I thought he did. I thought he was only okay there. Uh, I would go between Walter ha uh, Paul Walter Hauser and Ray Liotta for Blackbird. I know some of you are saying um, Richard Jenkins. Again, I didn't watch Dahmer because it was just too graphic for me. Uh, but I got to tell you, I did watch Blackbird. It's an incredible show, and I I agree with Natalia. I would lean a little bit to, and, and Lisa as well. I lean a little bit in Ray Liotta's direction because his role was so touching. And I know it was one of, his la one of his last performances, and he just really broke your heart. It was an incredible, incredible performance. So, and, but Paul Walter Hauser, he only kind of does the same thing, but he's really good at it. As for who will win, I got to tell you, I would like it to be one of those two guys, but I kind of think it might be Joseph Lee for Beef. I think Beef might got a lot, get a lot of love, and people really like Joseph Lee. He signed with a big uh, uh, talent agency. Maybe Richard Jenkins. Maybe. I'd love it to be Ray Liotta. But maybe Joseph Lee. All right. Then guest actress in a limited or anthology series. Annalee Ashford for Welcome to Chippendales. She plays Camille and Johnny's wife and partner in crime. Camilla Marone for Daisy Jones and the Six. Claire Danes for Fleischman is in Trouble. Juliette Lewis for Welcome to Chippendales. All, all the, for the few episodes that I watched Chippendales, I was like, how is Juliette Lewis in this? Maria Bello for Beef. Don't ruin Maria Bello's big surprise in Beef, but she was incredible. Uh, but it was more uh, that what happened to her character than what her character, how she acted. Merritt Weaver for Tiny Beautiful Things. And then Nisi Nash Betts for Dahmer. I have to agree with all of you. I think she should win Nisi Nash, and I think she will win, just because it's such an incredible performance. And she's able to hold her own opposite Jeffrey Dahmer, for Pete's sake. That's difficult to do. So I think she's going to take it. I think she's going to take it for sure. Uh, all right, we, have just, we just have two more categories. OK, the next one is guest. Oh, no, that was it. There's no, OK, that's it. There's no guest actor in limited series. Okay, so that, there we go. Those are the categories. Uh, all right, so it's, it's 2.43. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, you can ask me. We'll do anything you want. You know, you can ask me Emmy questions. You can ask me something else since you joined us today. All right. Uh, Mika, the Mission uh, Impossible spoiler review uh, might go up tomorrow. Uh, I filmed it, but I have to work on uh, Secret Invasion next. Ricardo says, why don't network shows get nominated? They once did. Uh, you know, Big Bang Theory used to win all the time. I think people, I mean, and also don't forget, Abbott Elementary is a network show. Uh, but I think that the issue is that they don't really view network television as having a high enough art form anymore. And so I think that's kind of the, the issue. Uh, Mandy, I didn't watch Welcome to Fleischman's. Uh, Pratik says, any news on the actors' strike? Well, you'll know if the actors are striking at midnight tonight. They're not happy. They, the last word from them was they were pretty upset. Uh, and so 
we'll see we'll see what happens but they might have a last minute deal it's going to cost everybody a lot of money if they go on strike so let's see what happens uh if they go if they don't go on strike it's really going to be bad for the acting community uh but we'll know tomorrow we'll know tomorrow that's right derek i didn't like the the three new cast picks for superman i thought they were um you know superman shouldn't be a side character or a character in a group film uh, you know, I feel that Superman, I think it just made me feel that James Gunn could only make one type of movie. Uh, and sometimes that movie might be good, to be fair. But I don't think that's a fit with the Superman character or what anybody wants to see from, a, Superman's not a team movie. And so I think it's, you know, I think maybe James Gunn feels he's like spreading out his risk or mitigating his risk. And I, I don't think that's true. Uh, hey, writer boy, thank you. Uh, Juan, those three heroes are not part of the authority in the comics, but maybe they might be uh, in James Gunn's world. We have to see. Callahan says, Grace, do you have Only Murders Season 3 screeners? I sure do, Callahan. I don't think I have the finale, but I have like eight episodes. Uh, 80s model. Uh, I will get your, you're getting your golden badge soon. That's very exciting. And as I, I just shared my thoughts about the Superman uh, casting. Let's see here. SMR Goose says, what are the most disappointing snubs? I guess I would have to say Elizabeth Olsen for um, Love and Death because her career is struggling and I don't know what she can do to fix it. Uh, and I think it's starting to make her bitter about Marvel, which makes me sad as well. I'm like, don't turn on the only thing that you have, Lizzie. I don't like to talk about movies until I've seen them. Uh, I will tell you, I saw Haunted Mansion last night. I can't even tweet about it. I'm still under even social media embargo, but I did get a chance to see Haunted, Haunted Mansion last night. Uh, Kate says, are we getting another trailer for the Marvels soon? I heard rumors and whispers of it. You would think it would go very well with Barbie, maybe. Uh, so let's see. My friend made a great joke about the Marvels. It was like, hey, girl, hey girls, the sixth grade too rough for you? You know, do you have a lot of... A lot of pressures, you know, like it was the ultimate sleepover movie to get your parents out of the room. Oh, let's see here. Evelyn. Hey, Evelyn says, do you think the Emmy ceremony is in danger because of the strikes? The possible SAG one and the writers one, and they make it anyway. Well, I believe the Emmys aren't until September. And if the actors go on strike, since that will truly shut down Hollywood, Hollywood will work as hard as possible to end it very quickly. So I don't know if the Writers Guild strike will still be striking, but the, by the time the Emmys air, the, the, screen, the, the Screen Actors Guild should be done. They, their strike should be uh, completed if it starts. Patrick says, Grace, I'm excited about Haunted, Man Haunted Mansion, but it feels like Disney is hiding it. Well, I don't know. It's the promoted on Twitter today as the top trend, right? Um, so I think they're maybe just ramping up as to how to promote it. Uh, Ryan says, any movie recommendations to see this coming weekend? Mission Impossible, baby. It's so good. Chris says, I think Blue Beetle is going to flop hard because of Lopez. The Hispanic community hates that man. Wish Warner Brothers did research on who the community likes. Well, I think they see how his tickets to his concerts sell and how his shows do. So, I mean, somebody's watching him. But I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, I, I think that... I think that all the DC movies that are left are not going to do well, and, and we'll see what happens with Superman Legacy. But I think The Flash really sent a strong message. Uh, Orlando Fackler says, what are your thoughts on the Napoleon trailer? Yeah, I feel really bad that I didn't get to re re react to that, but then the, the, the Hugh Jackman Wolverine picture dropped, and so then, you know, and then I also had to do movie math. I had a big family event this weekend, which has kind of thrown off my whole week, uh, so apologies about that. Um, but... Um, I thought the Napoleon trailer looked amazing. I thought that Joaquin Phoenix seemed a little bit too much like uh, Joker, a little bit still. I was like, what's the Joker doing in France? But I thought that Ridley Scott was like at the top of his game. I do think it's weird they all have British accents instead of French accents, I agree. But, you know, Ridley Scott's going to Ridley Scott. He even got in trouble for that. Ethan says, Grace, would you please comment on what was said about the WGA yesterday? Sure. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, it was leaked that the studios planned to quote unquote break the writers by making the strike last so long that it inflicts such financial pain on them. Uh, thank you for gifting memberships, Michael. 
uh, that it gives such finance, I mean, that it inflicts such financial pain on them, losing their apartments, losing their houses, that they have no choice but to be forced back to the bargaining table and the studios can push what they want. It's an awful, despicable thing to do. And I hope that it only gives the writers more resolve. Um, uh, it's horrible to make them eat into their savings. I have friends who are writers, and you know, people save up for life goals, uh, and then to have to dig into that just to protect their future, their future income, is really a horrific thing to do. So, but that's what. So I, and especially, I think that you know, to not meet them even like halfway is really horrible. So I thought that was just a horrible thing to see. Lucas says, I know you're not a big soups gal, but you should check out the new animated series. It's the perfect soups in my opinion. I did check it out, Lucas. I thought it was medium. I thought it was very anime. I thought it skewed very young, uh, but I did think it was charming. But I couldn't see myself tuning into that regularly. In fact, I haven't finished the first two episodes because I was like, meh. Uh, Juan says, did you see Robert Downey Jr.'s comments about the MCU affecting his acting ability? Why do actors feel the need to trash the MCU if most of them only have that going for them? I have no idea, Juan. I thought that was a very, very odd thing to do on Robert Downey Jr.'s part. Uh, maybe he's also struggling. Maybe he's trying to distance himself from it. Uh, and I think it's particularly weird when so many people are saying he's one of the best things in Oppenheimer, the people who've gotten a chance to see it. So it's like he didn't hurt his acting ability. So wouldn't he rather the narrative be, still got it, right? I think it's really bad. Lloyd says, Grace, what are your thoughts on the current shift from box office opening night from the standard Thursday night previews to now Wednesday? No, this was just, it's not a, a shift, Lloyd. They only did uh, Mission Impossible because it was trying to get out in front of Barbenheimer. Uh, this was just a Wednesday debut. And in fact, there were previews on Tuesday night, last night. So they still did the previews model. Isaac says, Grace, what viewership numbers does Nimona need to get a sequel? Uh, it needs like a lot more than it has. It, it was number nine. It's got to it's got to go up a lot more. It's got to like it needs it really needed to debut at one or two, quite frankly, uh, or it'd have to be in the top ten for a very long time. But quite frankly, I don't think it's looking good for a sequel. Hey Zay, great use of emojis. Lloyd, thank you for gifting a, a membership. David, did I skip your super chat? Hold on. I'm going back to find it. When are you seeing Barbie? I just told you I don't talk about screenings until I, uh, until I see them. Uh, let's see here. Poke, nobody likes the JSA. Poke is saying maybe the heroes that were just cast for Superman Legacy or JSA members. And if they're members of the JSA, that means, you know, the James Gunn's uh, wife is going to show up leading that team. And, I mean, like, it is what it is, man, you know? David Monzone says, when, did the, when does the Haunted Mansion embargo lift? It lifts the Tuesday before release on the 25th. Oh, let's see here. Ved, there's a little only murders in the building, love. Uh, Selena Gomez and Steve Martin were both snubbed, but Martin Short was nominated, as was the series. Mika, I'll try to post more on threads. David says, what order would you watch Barbenheimer in? Mm, that's an interesting question. Uh, Bob Ray, I'll be reviewing Secret Invasion by the end of the day. I would, hmm, I think I'd watch Barbie first. It's more fun and it's a party. And then I got to see what this, 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 what the love scenes are in Oppenheimer. I'm very curious to see what, in an IMAX? Oh, let's just see. Uh, my pleasure, Matthew. You have a great day too. But I think Barbie, go, go, I think, you know, you want to see, you want to see Oppenheimer for sure, but you want to have a party. You know? Uh, thanks for gifting a membership, Matthew. Mando's A says, did you see that a lot of people were not happy with the casting of Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner? Well, you know, I saw some people who were happy about it. You know, it depends on whether or not you're a big James Gunn and Nathan Fillion fan. And James Gunn said Nathan Fillion's going to play Guy Gardner throughout his DCU. 
So that means Guy Gard- Nathan Fillion is going to be popping up in a bunch of stuff. And so, I don't know. It just seems like a giant Peacemaker. And I know that some of you liked Peacemaker. I really had problems with it, which is why I didn't cover it. Because, you know, just enjoy it if you like it. Like, I had such problems with it that it was just like, I thought it was horrific. So if you liked it, just enjoy it. That's nice, okay? But uh, I feel like the number of people who liked Peacemaker was small compared to what you need for a major movie. Uh, Kareem, there is a Jon Stewart and a Hal Jordan, but they are not going to be in this movie. Uh, They are going to be showing up uh, in the series. Although none of that stuff seems to be moving forward. I wonder if Warner Brothers has really slowed James Gunn's roll down a little bit. Not necessarily because of anything James Gunn has done, but because of their lack of financial resources and how poorly The Flash did. Yeah, SMR Goose, three hours in Dolby would be better than three hours in IMAX because the seats are more comfortable, but we'll just have to tough it out. Brett says, hi, Grace. I'm also on a drinking water journey. A reusable straw has upped my game. Oh, that's awesome. I'm using an app also called Water Llama. Somebody recommended it to me, and you enter in uh, how much water you've had. Here, I'll show you. It sends you notifications, too. Here, I've had 36 ounces so far today. I'm working my way up to build a llama. Oh, yeah, water llama. It's fun. Nathan Fillion is in, like, everything, Kareem. It's ridiculous. Just Josh, I will be wearing pink for my Barbie coverage. I'll tell you that. Oh, a lot of you are suggesting some other apps. That's fantastic. Well, I better get to work. I've been on here longer than I was supposed to because, again, I love talking to you guys. Uh, But, yes, Devin Henderson, everyone also agrees with me that Wonka, you know, Timothy Chalamet is miscast as Wonka. Yeah. Also, i got to tell you, I think Nathan Fillion's time is over. There was a time when people wanted him to be everything. They were like, he should be uh, Nathan Drake. He should be this character. He should be this character. But it's over. It's like John Hamm. It's just, it's done. And I think, you know, you have to, you know, uh, a good producer recognizes that. I mean, not to say someone can't have a comeback, but I don't think these people are ready for comebacks. And these aren't comeback types of roles. Uh, Al Watch says, have you been to an awards after party? I have not been to an awards after party. Um, And Lord Baratheon says, do you have any tea on any recent screenings of the Marvels and how they have been? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, I think that movie is probably not horrible, but I, I don't think it's great. I think it looks, exa- I think it is exactly how it looks, quite frankly. All right, everybody, I, as usual, ha- oh, well, innovative David says, Grace is giving Barbie energy with my shirt today. Oh, that's right! I am wearing Barbie pink. I am planning special outfits for Barbie. Yes, I have a new one. Uh, one, I'm gonna probably rewear the shirt I did for the trailer reaction. But I also have a new pink shirt, which is very Barbie. Uh, Subtly pink, but I like it, and I think it's going to work. Oh, Vontron, good luck to your son for speech therapy. That's wonderful. You know, I'm glad that he's um, getting uh, the help that he needs to fix that. All right, everybody, I had a wonderful time talking to you as always. The next live stream will either be tomorrow or Friday. Uh, So I will talk to you. If there's a writer, if there's an actor's strike, there's a very good chance the live stream will be tomorrow. All right, everybody, bye. Bye Bye-bye. I had a wonderful time talking to you. Bye-bye.